How many know the Lord has great things in store for you? Look at your neighbor and say, great things. God has so, God so many great things in store for me. Can't you see that? God has so many great things in store for me.
worship your Jesus. Hallelujah. We adore you, Jesus. No one like you, Jesus. But God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy.
We thank you because if there was no shedding of blood, there would be no remission for sin. We thank you because you was wounded for our transgression. You was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes we are healed. Father, what the doctors cannot do, what medicine cannot do, what tablets cannot do, what the operation cannot do, we pray, God, as we eat and drink today, our bodies will receive strength in the name of Jesus. Where there is sickness, we pray for healing right now. Where there is a lost path, I pray for direction in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that these symbols, oh God, will be sanctified no longer bread, but a symbol of your broken body. No longer fruit juice, but the symbol of your shed blood. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. Because as we eat and drink today, we will show forth your death. Until you come. Bless it right now. Bless our hearts today. And even if we was not worthy before, we will be worthy. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for having mercy and compassion upon we your children in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let us all repeat the Lord's prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the Son of our daily bread. Just stay. I'm singing. Oh, 
And as I said, every day there is some sort of praise that is going on. If you're at the workplace and you have done um, well, they praise you because you've done well. If you're a football fanatic and, and you enjoy football, whether you support Arsenal, whether you support Man United, whether you support Liverpool, whether you support Aston Villa, whether you support Wolves, whoever you support, you will praise them when they have scored a goal. Am I right about it? When the, the noble kings and presidents and MPs and these people in high positions make an entrance, we praise them. When children are performing at school and they're doing their plays and their Christmas plays and their productions, we praise them. So praise goes on every day of our lives. But however, this praise that I'm talking about is not about that praise, but I'm talking about the praise to the Almighty God. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. So here, in studying this, and I've probably preached this before, but, but, but the Holy Spirit will sometimes have you um, go back to remembrance. There are some several Hebrew words for praise that that occur during our worship services. And sometimes we do them, and sometimes we just do them because it's an automatic thing. Because uh, this is when when you think of the goodness of Jesus, all you need to do is think, and then you just react straight away. You just think. That's why, if you really think about it, uh, the enemy tries to play with your mind, and the enemy tries to make you forgetful, because he doesn't want you to think and remember of the goodness of God. So here number one is where I yada. Somebody say yada. Yada. The Hebrew word it means to give thanks. It means I extend my hands. I throw out my hands in worship. How many of you do that in worship? You don't even realize but you just throw your hand up. You extend your hand. Why? Why does if somebody is giving you something, somebody can't, you can't receive what the person is giving you with your hands closed. I, am I right about it? If so I will bless thee as long as I live. I will yada. I will lift up my hands in thy name. You'll find that in Psalm 63, verse 1. You've got to understand this, that everything that we do in church is not about spiritual exercise. But everything we do is biblical. There's a biblical reference to what we do. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Why do we sing in the house of God? Zama. Zama. Z-A-M-A-R means to sing praises unto God. First Chronicles 16 and verse 9, sing to him, sing praises, Zama, to him, speak of all his wonders. So I will come into the house of the Lord and I will sing praises unto God. Hallelujah. But it doesn't only start here because when I'm at home, I may not even have a songbook, I may not even have a hymnal, I don't even know, but I just start to sing praises unto God. Have you ever just gone in the shower and you're just making melody unto God and you just start to sing, oh God, I thank you. You're washing the dishes and you're singing unto God. Whatever you're doing, you're just singing. You're making melody unto God. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Then you have a halal. And I ain't talking about the meat, but halal. The word hallelujah comes from this Hebrew word halal. H-A-L-A-L. -A -L. And what does it mean? It means to honor. It means to commend. It means to boast. It means to celebrate. It means to be clamorously foolish. Sometimes uh, in situations that we are going through, uh, you got to give God a foolish praise. You got to give God a ridiculous praise. You got to give God a praise that sometimes it don't make no sense to nobody else. Psalm 149 verse 3 says, let them praise 
to God. When I'm at home and I used to be younger and pray in church, I used to take the, um, the Dutch pot cover. Because that's a good one, isn't it? And the Dutch, and you take something and you bang it and you make all the noise. But God makes it exact thing of a God. But to me, I was making a joyful noise unto God. Find something and give God praise with it. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. When we talk about being foolish, David was dressed in the linen ephod and David danced with all his might before God. Miriam danced with the temple in her hand until other women started to follow her because what? Praise and worship is contagious. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. So here we have several Hebrew Words that mean to praise, and I'm skipping through because of, of time. Praise is what we do. Praise is not something I don't need to crank you up. I don't have to warm you up. But praise deep down on the inside. That even if there's no drama, even if there's no organist, I will still bless the Lord at all times. Oh, somebody praise the name of the Lord. God resides in a climate of praise. God comes in in a climate of praise. I hear people talk and say all of the time as they come to this place and they meet at the door as they come through the gates and they come in and they feel the presence of God. Why? Because we worship and we praise God here. Hallelujah. You may want to do other things but here we, we, we invoke the presence of God. Here must be an atmosphere of praise, an atmosphere of worship. Yes, we can talk afterwards but during service time it's about worship and praise unto God. Oh, somebody praise the name of the Lord. Praise is not conditioned, Sister Lee. It's not conditioned to my emotions and to how I feel. Because if the truth of the matter is, uh, sometimes I don't feel like doing it. Come on, you, you don't feel like, you don't feel like praying because you've got this problem, you've got that. Maybe you've got a few aches and pains. Maybe you've got some situations that that you know you've got some problem and you just don't know how to make it through. But praise, praise is what I do. Praise because I owe God this. I owe Him my praise. I owe Him my worship. I owe Him my time. I owe him my treasure. I owe him my body. I owe him my soul. I owe him my mind. I owe him. So when we talk about praise and then we talk about worship, the word worship comes from its two words put together into one. It's actually worth shape. Meaning to attribute worth to someone. We must understand that not everything, now get this, and not knocking everything, but sometimes what we really think is worship is not really worship. Sometimes what we think is real honor is not real honor. But worship is giving value to God for who he is. Not for what he's done, but for who he is. He is God, omnipotent, almighty, invisible, the all-knowing God. All by himself. So here, I understand this. That I praise God because the scripture said that everything that has breath praise God. But when I worship now, the worship becomes a little bit deeper because to worship it means I've got to have a covenant relationship with Him. Because at this point, I am worshiping Him not for what He's done, but I'm worshiping Him for who He is. 
Somebody praise the name of the Lord. So it may be, and, I, and it may be, in closing, it may be, uh, we're coming down to the latter part of the year and, and, and we prayed and you, you put your petition before God and you've sought God and, and, and in all that you've sought God, you've sought God in January and it hasn't come through. And you've come through February, March, April, May, June and July, August, September, October and November. And it still seems like it is not going to happen. But I come to make an announcement to you today that God still has got time to come through for you. But, I come to tell you the day, we owe him. We owe him. Because the house of God, it may be just temporary. Are you with me? It may be just temporary. And I was, I was thinking about that, um, um, uh, Minister Ruth, when you think about our forefathers, they pitched a tent in the Old Testament and they built an altar. And every time they moved, because there was a journey that they moved, they have to pitch a tent again and build another altar. Everywhere they went, they pitched their tent and built their altar. So I don't want to be ungrateful to God, but whenever I am, I need to praise Him. Whenever I can, I need to praise Him. So if it even means that I'm at the workplace and I need to take some time and go into the bathroom and just pitch my tent right there and build my altar right there and just say, just for a couple of minutes, I'm just going to give you praise and I'm just going to give you worship. Because I owe him. And I don't want any rocks to cry out in my place. I don't want us to feel be ungrateful to God. God's been too good to us. God's been too good, isn't it? God's been too good, too good. We 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 quarrel, and I was thinking about, it, and you know, I, I'm really thinking about it. Uh, you know, really, 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 and, and in traveling, you get to see so much things. People standing, you know, and they're standing on the corners begging for food. They watch you go um, into the the fast food restaurants, and they're standing outside, you know, literally wanting. Have you got any money? But because you know it's a cashless society these days, most people don't really have money. But they, they're willing to take the crumbs. Uh, you know, they're willing to take leftover burgers. They're willing to take whatever they can. Hallelujah, just to eat. When you think about, we say we are cold, but yet still we're just going from a warm house into a car to come into another warm building. But then you've got somebody that's outside that has been shelved. Think of the frost. Think of the frost that has fallen. Think, and the temperature's gone down to minus four. And think about it. You quarrel at your house. It's cold. But still your heating is still on. And Somebody outside is under a, 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 a cardboard box. And it has to be a cardboard box with another cardboard box because they get wet and they get thinner. But yet still, it's like God has to still beg us to praise him. And I'm not talking about praise because praise and worship does not start in the house of God, but it starts in your home. It starts in you. Praise and worship must become your lifestyle. There's some people I don't want to be around because you're negative. Negativity has become your lifestyle. All you do is moan and grow. Everything comes out of your mouth. You moan about this, you moan about that, but you should flip it the other way. And let praise and worship be our lifestyle. 
me back into a hollow market. But he's going to leave me beside the still waters. And it will be there that he will restore my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I owe him this. It looks strange, but I owe him this. My friends may, 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 may have been around me once upon a time, and they're not around me now, but I still owe God the praise. And I still owe God the worship. It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. In closing today, I believe, and we go home with this factor, take a stock of your life. Go back and look from January come right down to now. People start in the year with us. People made plans for Christmas. People made plans for the summer. People made plans for this and made plans for that. But they're no longer here. Don't talk about the same younger people. No, younger people too. Go to their bed at night and don't wake up the next day. People are out and about. Young people, just as at Jaden's age and younger, are walking up and down the streets killing people. Our youth are attacking one another. So much different things are happening around us in our society. I owe him. What do I owe him? What do I owe him? I owe him my worship. I owe him. And the scripture says, he seeks for true worshipers. They that will worship him in spirit and in truth. I owe him. I owe him my life. I owe him my all. I owe him my time. I owe him my treasure. I owe him my talent. I owe him all of me. It's amazing how we will give ourselves to other people. We will give ourselves to the job. We will give ourselves to our hobbies but we won't give ourselves to God. Are you with me? You know people that, that do sports and, and, and all of those things? They are so committed. Huh? They are so committed that they stop eating certain things and they go on a, a strict diet. They, you know, they can't do this and they can't do that because they love what they do. I love God so much that I owe Him my all. Because without Him, I can be nothing. But I said to you today, there's the priceless target. Huh? There's those things people are praising, they are temporary. They don't last forever. Temporary. They lose their value. But I give God my all. Because without him, without him, we cannot do anything. I encourage you today, everyone under the sound of my voice, think of your life, go back into your life, and where you have been lacking, where you have been lacking, go back and look. I can't force you, all I can just do is give you the word. All I can just do is admonish you, just as I admonish myself. Look into your life. See how you live. And if you are withholding part of what you need to give God, give Him your all. And not just a part, because He inhabits the praises of His people. Clap your hands and give the Lord the glory. Let's do it for you. Look at your neighbor and say, great thing. God has so many great things in store for me. Can't you see? God has so many great things in store for me. Can't you see? God has so many great things in store.
many great things. 